Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Lynx and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where today I'm sending in a very interesting mission to the moon. So you might be wondering why is my payload so large if I'm only going to the moon? Well, I have a contract to extract ore from the surface of the moon and deliver it to road. I found it on the contracts list and I thought, you know what, that, that's quite humorous. I think I'll do it. <laughs> you know, I like a little bit of a challenge and it seemed relatively challenging because ore is incredibly heavy. So I wanted to see how this rocket would fair if I stuck it onto the surface of Lua, got some ore, sent it back to road, and uh, carried on my merry way. I really want to unlock that base because that'll allow me to launch things like satellites from its surface, and there are a lot- what is my gravity turn? What is this? I can't even- I have no control over this at all. What on earth? So I've added a couple more boosters to the side, two more fuel tanks on the bottom, and I think we're good to go. And this is actually starting to look like quite a nice rocket, you know, quite a nice craft, don't mind me saying. Anyway, we have a fair amount of fuel on this one now. I, I forgot to actually look at how much fuel it had before. So uh, I was just kind of like, yeah, that'll work. It kind of looks like it'll work. So we'll send it up and we'll hope for the best. Anyway, now I've got a little bit more of an expensive rocket, but the returns on this contract are supposed to be quite good, so they say, but the people in charge of assigning it were kind of stupid. My thrust to weight ratio is 0.83. See, I don't understand why, because Kerbal Engineer said it was 1.5. I am... Um, the large confusion right now. So, uh, remember this video? Well, it turns out that I was playing with this rocket and gravity was increasing as I was going up. So, uh, I apologize. That was, um, foolish behavior on my part. <laughs> I got halfway up and I was like, wait a minute, something's not right. This one is not like the others. All right, a proper stage separation, and I'm still speeding up, there we go. My thrust to weight ratio is actually accurate, 1.6. There we go, we're finally getting an orbit. <laughs> I'm gonna solve that problem, now then. There we are. I just, I just had to cut the engine because before it was slamming into the craft and blowing things up. Anyway, we're at Apoaptis. It's time to begin burning out, which I'm doing. And there's the lander. I haven't shown it in all its glory yet. There's a lot of there's a lot of breaks. I don't have a heat shield on this because this is a, a skipper engine. But that should be more than enough to get us off the surface of Lua with all of the fresh material we've extracted. You know, the material we could have extracted from road. You know, I'll, I'll get over it. I'll get over it. Aha, there we go. We have an orbit. It's not the most circular one. It's a little bit off, but yeah, it's 69. All right, we have a 22 second burn coming up and we're actually doing it on the light side of the road. Now in uh, in a lot of the other videos, I don't show a lot of the maneuver stuff that I'm doing because I feel like it's just not exciting. So let me know if you do want to see more of the orbital maneuvery sort of stuff or not, because quite often I cut out me being on the way back to road because it's, it's just the same as I did when I got there, you know? Unless I do a fancy maneuver like a gravity assist, which I very rarely do. Oh, I, oh, I messed up. Ah. Now, I really want to land in a canyon. I really want to show off some of those nice, nice canyons. But for the moment, I'm just going to focus on circularizing and then we will do all of the, the fancy tricks and stuff. But yeah, if you don't already know, Lua underwent a massive overhaul in the most recent update of this planet mod. So I've added things like canyons. I've basically drastically improved its terrain. So you'll see that when we get closer, when the terrain loads in a bit more, you can see the hint of some canyons over there. Now from a distance, because of how the terrain system works, it, it, it just never looks good from a distance without lagging your computer out. So um, yeah, we'll we'll have a little bit of a look when we get a bit closer. Oh, well, the stage ran out. So that, that's pretty good timing. You know? Boop. There we are. This is the stage that will be landing. I'll put some brakes on to flip us out. It does look like a very odd craft, I do have to say. <laughs> and now let's warp. There's our target. There's our encounter with the canyon. Oh, I'm going to deploy these new chutes. And I'm just going to hope they deploy. Now, this might be a bit of a... I might have made a little bit of a mistake here. <laughs> it's fine, I'll go across like that. And the brakes are doing a hell lot of nothing. All the parachutes have deployed. Actually, um, yeah. Are they actually gonna flip me around like that? Have they, have they really done that to me? I, I see the problem. Can I slow myself down enough? Because this looks like it's like exactly on the center of mass, which is really annoying. Can I just abuse gimbal? I really hope, I think I can. I might be able to just abuse the gimbal on my engines. Okay. <laughs> there we go, look at that. You see, this is why I really wanted to make some changes to Lua, and I know most of the people watching this might play the mod. I mean, if you don't, hopefully you don't mind me going on about it a fair bit because I'm just really passionate about it. And this is why I really wanted to overhaul this this moon because now the terrain just looks like something you would actually find in real life. It looks really good now. Let's keep it steady then. <laughs> I'll do a radial out as soon as I touch the ground. There we are. Oh, is that going to have too much momentum? Yeah. And that's not what we want, is it? That's an outstanding move, that is. 
So what I need to do is I need to configure my landing legs appropriately to match the gradient because this rocket was not the best design, I'll, I'll just tell you that. Set all the spring strengths really high, then I need to remove these ones specifically from symmetry, set the spring strength to nothing, remove you from symmetry and set the spring strength to nothing, and hopefully that stops me from tipping. I think that's done the trick. There we go. Perfect. Just know how to configure your landing legs and, it, and everything will be fine. <laughs> now all I've got to do is extract some ore. So I'm going to deploy all of the drills and start the surface harvester. Perfect. And all we have to do is wait. And this is our location on Lua. It looks very nice. <laughs> this is where we will uh, begin the extraction of all of the ore. As the days went by, ore was extracted from the moon for no reason at all, as it could also be obtained from road. And there we go, I've extracted absolutely everything I need to. Here's a rock, sample pebble. You came to the moon to look at stones? That's quite disappointing. Yeah, I agree, let's go back. <laughs> Moon's haunted. You know, I think it's time we planted a flag. Ah, oh, Jeb, you idiot. <laughs> My most recent subscriber is this person called Cure96. I'm gonna go with that, you know, Cure96. So, there we go. Your name is on the flag. And off we go. Back to road. And now I get to maintain stability for 10 seconds in orbit of road. Oh boy. <laughs> A really riveting conclusion to this video. Goodbye. I was worried why my craft was tipping for the moment, but I've realised I got the brakes on. <laughs> this is a really good landing site as well. I'm really happy with actually taking the decision to land in these canyons. I hope you guys like that as well, because <laughs> this place looks really cool. And it's time to leave Lua behind. There's the flag we planted. There's the tree that we decided to go to. And off we go. Time to deliver some ore to road. I'm still salty about that. I'm still annoyed. <laughs> oh, look at those canyons though. Oh, a terraformer. Ah, I didn't realize that was there. <laughs> that just popped into existence. It's just so nice seeing the terraformers there. They contribute a lot to the views on Lua, I reckon. And it's gone. <laughs> okay, right. Now I have to maintain stability for 10 seconds. A great conclusion to this contract. Surely just quality content. That really, it's really what you subscribe for, that. Whoa, look at that, that green text. That's what you're subscribing for. <laughs> All right, well, there we go. Now it's time to return to road. I'm not sure how I'm going to re-enter this with all this ore, but we'll try. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Please don't kill me on the way in. All right, let's start by facing outwards. Now, I do have another engine on this because I'm going to have to do a powered landing. It doesn't have the most Delta V. And in fact, I do need to pump my fuel back into here. There we go. I have a whole 58 meters per second left. So gear out, brakes out. I just hope road is nice to us today. <laughs> Because I'm a very heavy object travelling through the atmosphere. And I'm not getting any temperature bars yet, which is good. I so oh, oh, the air brakes. Oh, right, let's let's just kill this last stage. Yeah, like, 20, 20 meters per second. What, what good is that really going to do us? Let's deploy that stage. And I was actually expecting to uh, move away a little bit. A little bit. Whoa, that was dangerous. I was expecting to move away a little bit, a little bit quicker than that, but fine. Is, is it coming back? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming back. It's legit coming back. <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting it to actually come back, but that kind of just goes to show how heavy this craft is compared to its surface area. I do have a couple of parachutes left, but this is an interesting looking craft at least. It's, it's, it's very interesting. You can just see that the other one in the distance there. Oh, the amount of temperature bars on this. Now, I just need to slow down. I don't want to land on that mountain, but it looks like I'm going to land on that mountain. But all I need to do is slow down. That's why I've got this engine. I've got a little bit, just a little bit of fuel at the end to just slow me down for good, which does have a positive plus to weight ratio, which is why it's a skipper engine. Otherwise, it, it wouldn't be there if it wasn't to slow me down. And it seems like that's the most of the heating, and it looks like I'm going to clear the mountain. But landing in the ocean? I don't know. Is that a blessing or a curse? Look at that. <laughs> I'm just a pod. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be traveling too fast for the parachutes to actually open properly, though. And some of them are opening out already. Let's see how slow we end up going. All right, 150 meters above the surface. I think I'll start it in a minute. Is that one of my other stages? I don't know what that is. Why would that be there? Well, here's the powered landing. 
And there we go. <laughs> Didn't need to deliver all of that, but this is kind of cool. You know, this actually looks like a cool base. If it was a base, which it's not, but it, it looks cool. I like it. Anyway, recovery. Well, I got 60 science from the experiments that I conducted on lower. I got 40k back from my uh, back from my parts, which is pretty good. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Kerbal Space Program Beyond Home. If you like that, feel free to like and subscribe. These episodes take a lot of effort to make, and I'll see you all in the next episode.